Well, it's just 10 o'clock, guys. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started today. This is our final program here and the virtual programming that we put together. Um, I'd like to thank uh, thank our sponsors this year. It was a tremendous amount of help. Sponsors really stepped forward and allowed us to do some of this programming and present some of these topics. You know, I've joked to you that we're in uh, we're in week 200, but at the same time, it's been it's been pleasant to spend each Tuesday morning with you all and see so many familiar faces and people looking back in appreciation for what we've been doing and what we've been going through. So we appreciate that. Um, I'd like to throw out a couple thank yous real quick if we could. There's been uh, some people working behind the scenes. I know you've heard them, their names before, but Meg, my office manager up at Jaga and Kathy Cunningham down to uh, Summit. And of course, uh, our anchor there at the OFMA office with Leanne Bush. The three of those guys are always on board to bail me and Howard out of whatever we get in over our head on. And uh, we can't say them thank you enough to all of them for helping us out and getting through this stuff. So I think Mr. Arger would even second that one that they've jumped in and helped him out a few times when he couldn't get his computer on. So we got a, a few things going there. So um, today's program as we put together was developing a, a health plan and putting a health plan in place. Um, obviously we put this one off to the last or I guess to the latest, I should say, uh, simply to try and have a better handle on where we are um, and what kind of plans we're gonna have. You know, we were fortunate there at the 1st of March that the governor stepped forward and, uh, and met our request and released fairs to open for full fairs this season. And of course, as you know, then very soon there in April, he brought out another order that rescinded all previous orders and uh, that's the order that we're currently dealing with. We're currently dealing with that, uh, that pared down version. We'd hope that at this point, we'd have a little better handle on where we were with the vaccinations and stuff. I'm not sure we're there yet. Um, there's still some confusion going on with it. I know that uh, numbers in a few counties have spiked here just lately and taken off. And yet at the same time in my county, they're doing drive through vaccinations here, but they've canceled the July appointments because they don't think that uh, they've got enough people registered to come in to get the vaccinations. So we see two ends of the continuum where we see some things going up and we see some uh, areas where we don't need vaccinations anymore. So, but that's where we're at. Um, Howard, I don't, is Amanda on this morning? She was gonna try and jump on. I'm not sure I saw her here anywhere. Amanda, are you out there? Oh, I don't see her on. Okay. And Howard's driving this morning. He was uh, lucky enough to go get a COVID test this morning. And so he's driving. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump into this. Uh, Meg, if you want to bring that PowerPoint back up, we can. We're going to jump into this and get through it. Hopefully we uh, cover what you need to know and we can answer any questions we can at the end of the, at the end of it. But uh, so this is basically where we're at. Let's go next, Meg. There we go. So that, like I said just a minute ago, the director's order, which amended all our uh, all other orders, he rescinded all other orders. Um, by the way, that was my idea to put the Ohio Welcome You sign up, haha. -ha. But at any rate, here's the link that you can get. Uh, Meg's got the link up here for the health order. This is the one we're currently using. I think we're going to pull that up too. Then. You there, Meg? Yeah, can you see the PDF or do I have to? No, I can't see the PDF. Okay, hold on. One second. Now, can you see it? Yeah, there you go. So there's the order. Um, we've sent this out to everybody. There's several, several sections to this order. You can scroll down it, Meg, just real briefly. There's several sections of this order that cover everything now. We just have one order that covers everything in the state. So we're all under the same, same guidelines, same order. It was their anticipation with this to make it simplified. I'm not sure that they did that. I, I, they think they did. So, I mean, we'll take it. There's not a lot in it that pertains directly to fares themselves. Um, but you'll notice down at the bottom, and Howard pointed this out at our spring meetings, uh, 
You'll notice down at the bottom, and this has been the one thing that we've been the most concerned about, to the extent any public official enforcing this order has questions regarding what services are prohibited under the order, the Director of Health hereby delegates to local health departments the authority to answer the questions in writing and consistent with this order. So that's obviously been a big concern of ours so that dumps it back in the hands of the local health departments. And we've got local health departments that are on either end of the continuum where they're as strict as they can be and they're as liberal as they can be. So hopefully we get through this today. Um, this is our suggestion. We're gonna break this whole order down on the areas that affect you and just talk about them real quick and real briefly. And then we're gonna look at um, a health plan that you can develop and put together and uh, work with your local health department. So go ahead, Meg. First up, obviously how to plan for 2021. We just, uh, you know, there's some confusion uh, with some of this stuff. Obviously, like we said, we're gonna have, we're gonna be all over the board on this. So don't be afraid to call and ask us stuff. But facial coverings is one thing that's obviously in this. It's obviously a big part of it. Um, ex you know, that's a mask, that's a sign that we used last year to put up at the gates and the barns and the buildings and everything. That's still gonna come into play this year. Any indoor location, outdoors, when you're unable to consistently maintain six feet social distance um, and have individuals with their, and not just within your household, masks are gonna need to be worn. You're gonna need to make them provided. You're gonna have to provide masks and keep everybody safe, so. And that really, I don't think we need to spend any time on facial coverings we've been dealing with for over a year. Um, we just don't see this ending anytime real soon. Um, so that's where we're at. Meg? Congregating. Um, you know, this is the thing where they say we must avoid it. Uh, obviously that's gonna be a challenge for us at fairs, festivals, especially. Individuals must avoid gathering in groups and attempt at all times to maintain social distancing. Um, I'm pretty sure this midway picture, they're all six feet apart. I'm not sure, maybe we'd have to get a ruler out and measure them, but when gathered together, individuals <laughs> should be in a group of no more than 10 individuals that is separated from other groups by at least six feet. Each individual should perform a daily health screening and assessment, check for fever and so on. That's old news. The highlighted area in this topic here with the congregating comes into play with those 10 people. This is what they did with this order to try and streamline things. However, this is where the confusion seems to come into play with the order. We can now have 10 individuals gathering in a group together. They don't have to be from the same household. However, they have to be six feet apart from the next group of 10 people. So that's, that's where the the play comes in, how we accom you know, accommodate that, I'm not entirely sure, but at any rate, that's what we need to try and promote. So go ahead, Meg. Social distancing requirements. Um, for the purpose of this order, social distancing requirements include maintaining at least six feet. Again, we're back to the six feet. Washing the hands with soap and water, nothing new there. Covering coughs or sneezes into your sleeve or your elbow, nothing new regularly cleaning high touch surfaces and not shaking hands. These are all things we've been dealing with over the whole course of this last year. Um, this doesn't change anything, but these are the areas of this order that pertain to what we do with fairs and that. So go ahead, Meg. Next, there we go. Sanitation, um, hand washing or sanitation upon entry into your facility. These are huge to have at your gates and obviously outside barns and areas. The sanitizer products have become more available. They're not quite as bad as what they were last year to get a hold of. And obviously, you know, we rented these units from Aris. Uh, most of your porta potty uh, suppliers have gone ahead and gotten these, gotten the equipment and brought it up to date and have equipment available and they're actually very easily rentable. So make sure that's what you, if you want to reach out to them as well. So Meg. Large gatherings. So we're back to that social distancing part, large gatherings. Organizers and managers should conduct the event in a manner that discourages individuals from standing or sitting close together. In buildings on other parts of the grounds or premises where possible, the organizers and managers provide one-way traffic in the buildings 
or other areas where doing so will help people maintain social distancing. So you need to look at your activities that are taking place. You need to look at any activity that you might have that looks like it's gonna congregate, looks like you're gonna promote congregating. Um, if you have people waiting in a line, you might wanna try and figure out how to break those lines up, make tickets available at different, you know, different abilities or abilities to have more lines. You know, we did with exhibitor tickets, you know, we're looking at trying to hand out our exhibitor tickets in a different fashion than we had before, because when we do that and we take entries in at the fair, we have exhibits in that, we tend to get a, a congregated area. So we need to plan that out a little better and, and watch, promote that one way traffic in these buildings and stuff and just a flow of, of, of people through. So go ahead, Meg. The one area of the health order that is very specific towards fairs is a reprint from last year's order as far as exhibitions, competitions, and auctions. That was the one paragraph in it that they pulled out of the fair order itself and put in this new order. This is not new. This is what we were dealing with last year. It's what they had it in there with. Participants, spectators, and judges, so when possible, maintain six feet social distance. We're back to it again. Family members and participants shall have priority priority in the viewing area. Um, so when you're doing your shows and your sales and things like that, the people that have family in there get that priority seating. Each family group should group together in the viewing area. Um, there should be six foot between families. Again, that's a confusion part because we just got done saying you can have 10 people. They don't all have to be in the same group now, but nonetheless, that's how the order reads. Microphones should be sanitized when you hand them off. You know, we've done this a couple of times, even with our spring meetings this year. You know, you get two, three people using the same microphone and passing it on. Make sure you get it sanitized before it gets on to the next person. Organizers should consider virtual. You know, we looked at some virtual opportunities last year with sales and things like that. I think we'll continue to use them this year. They were actually a benefit for the sales and the programs too, and some of the showings. Um, you know, we had people with family members in California that were able to enjoy parts of the fair last year with their grandkids and stuff where they normally wouldn't have been able to because we did things virtually. And I think that sums it up, Ming. Fixed seating. So this is where the biggest confusion comes into play is fixed seating. Um, not more than 10 people seated together. They don't have to be from the same family group. We keep hitting on this. So, you know, in the original order, what we had the biggest problem with was the 30% seating. We all said we couldn't live with 30% in the grandstand. So they took that out. Well, everybody thought we had a green light to go forward with 100%, and technically we do, but at the same time, you've got this 10 people together and six feet apart. And I know yesterday, the Cleveland Indians announced that on May 1st, they were gonna go to 40% seating or 40% capacity. And that's how they figured this 10, 10 people together thing works into their plan down there. I'm not sure exactly what the answer is to it. That's why I said we don't have this at 100% yet. We don't have the exactly where we're gonna be within a month or two. Um, hopefully that it continues to get released and we continue to be able to sell more tickets and put more people in. But we had a discussion the other night and I'll just use our fair for an example. You know, We see 3,100 people for our grandstand show for a demolition derby. 3,100 people at 18 inch backsides is how we, we calculate that to get them in at the grandstand. I can't see any situation where we're gonna be back to that anytime soon, especially because I don't think the public would support it. So, I mean, our best case scenario, I would think come Labor Day, a, a, a maximum 100% capacity on a 3,100 seat grandstand is gonna be close to 2,000 people. And that's probably gonna be tight. I just don't see where even the public will want to get back in. And if we start to have to shoehorn people into those grandstands, I can see complaints coming from across the board. So just keep that in mind as you work forward with your shows and stuff. 100% might not look like 100%. So go ahead, Meg. Indoor capacity, it's very clear on this one. Indoor seating, fixed seating capacity. When you have something done indoors, not outside, is 25% of the maximum capacity indoors. I mean, that's the one thing that's clear. It's simple. That's what it is. That's what they're calling it. So you know how to figure it. Um, you'll notice on the picture here, this is just a, a, a seating arrangement that seemed to gain some popularity last year. 
I would think we'd use something similar to it this year, where we simply took seats and we put two chairs in one row and three chairs in the next and, you know, alternated them three, two, three, two, and then kept them six feet apart with the rows. And that way the people could group together in their family clusters and that when they came in. So go ahead, Meg. Signage, we're back to signage. We showed you the face mask signage in the beginning. Um, signage needs to be posted across your grounds. This is easy enough to do. Signage, hand washing stations, sand wash, you know, signage, where to go, one-way traffic, um, inherent risks of COVID, things like that um, up at your gates. It's no different than anything we've ever put signs up before. You know, when we dealt with, uh, I think a few years ago, we dealt with swine flu, you know, we put the signs up that they can no longer have food or drink in the animal barns and, and different things like that. So the signage is important. Blanket your grounds with the signage. And by all means, if you want to work with a fair that's a neighbor fair or a couple fairs, you know, go together, the signage isn't that expensive anymore. You can make these pretty cheap and you can share these kinds of things, you know. I mean, these are things that get a hold of your neighbor fair and get talking to them because if they're going to do something, uh, you know, you might as well go in together and get multiple signs and then spread them out. You know, we traded stuff back and forth to a couple fairs last year and it was very beneficial. So go ahead, Meg. Buildings, uh, the one category that it covers on buildings, they want buildings accessible to the public. So strive to have maximum ventilation, have open doors, open windows, open facilities, try and keep air movement going. They're very specific about that in the order. Food and beverage. Um, one thing that switched from last year, I'd say I'd call it a change from last year is we were trying to not let people congregate in seating areas last year. And that's what they're recommending this year. So I think what they've seen is the success for uh, some of these bigger parks in that, where you go and you get your food, you designate an area to sit and eat it, and you go to that area, you unmask, and then you go ahead and eat and come back out. I mean, that's what they're recommending. I guess from a concession standpoint, obviously, I don't think we're going to get that 100%, but maybe you can look at it. If you guys can set your concession trailers up in a little bit different spacing, or if you have a cancellation here or there, maybe you don't fill that cancellation with another one, um, you simply use that area to set up some picnic areas and some designated areas. Now that comes into play on the other side of it, you need to have a sanitation team assigned to those areas to make sure they're clean and sanitized, wiped down for the next patrons coming in. So go ahead, Meg. Yeah, we had that, PDF didn't come up. That's okay, Meg, we can just keep going. So those are the areas in the plan that affect what we do. That's what the plan puts out. That's what the order puts out. And that's what affects our, our fairgrounds and that and what we're doing and what we're in business on. Um, to take a quick minute before we go into developing a plan and just if Howard's got anything he wants to add to what we we're talking about with the order, or if anybody has a direct question on the order. Maybe well, just let me interject a couple things here, Paul. Sure. Uh, number one, uh, there's an appeals process. In this last order, it states they must reply in writing. There's an appeals process in the state. It's in the state health department file. And also, all the cases that have been held for appeal are, are in there. You can read the decisions. Now, most of the cases have been upheld. I can't recall reading one recently where they were granted uh, the appeal. Um, secondly, I'm suggesting as long as this order is in place that you have your concessions post a large lettered note on the where they are serving the food out, reminding people to please sit and eat and not to walk around. That's something we're gonna do at uh, both Talmadge and at Geauga uh, uh, just in order to try to comply with the order. And again, it's the perception of fact here of what you try to do to keep in lines with the order, whatever the order is at the, at the time of your event and, and the, um, you, know, you know, again, the perception of trying to comply. Um, and, and I think that, you, you know, we can all hope that we get to the 50 per 100,000 and we get rid of all this stuff. 
but at this rate, we're not there yet. I'm not sure we're gonna be there yet for our first fair opening June the 12th. Okay, Paul. Anybody else have any questions in regards to just the order? Anything that we can answer any questions on? Great, quiet group. Let's go ahead then and go to the next one, Meg. So how does this uh, play when you when you develop a plan? So um, I think that's where we're at. You get there, Meg? When you develop your plan, and what we'd recommend that you do is you go ahead and develop a plan and spell it out. And when I talked about it before, look at your fair, look at your fair and how it pertains. Go from the start to the finish. Look at how you handle your entry tickets all the way to how you handle your exit then on the last night of the fair with your cattle and your animals and everything and your exhibit set being torn down. Look at it across the board. If you want to just dissect each avenue or each part of that and put it into a plan and put it in writing and go ahead and have it available, have it available so when you get questioned by your health board, have it available so when you get questioned by the public, have it available so that your staff, your people, your fair board, your volunteers, and your employees know with their particular area exactly what's expected of them and exactly how you're going to handle it to provide a healthful facility on them. Now, it's important at the same time not to overthink it because we put too much into it and we get overwhelmed in it. Um, but what should your health plan include? Um, there's several things to it. Uh, the history of the fair, you might want to pop a paragraph in there to start out with the history of the fair, state what changes you made, what guidelines, what do, state what you're going to do to adhere to these guidelines and how you're going to follow it, and, and show the official approval process of how your board's gone through these and making these decisions. You know, when we say that the stuff that you put in there, we don't want you to spend, you know, 25 pages of history in your fair and overwhelm somebody, but at the same time, we saw health plans come out of Florida last year for fairs that were twice the size of ours. There were one piece of paper on one side and that's all they did to explain it. Then we saw some that come out from state fairs that were 20 pages long, but they had a lot of areas to cover. So go ahead, Meg. So last year, um, Meg and I worked on a plan for our fair. We did a little overwhelmingness on our plan because we needed it to go to the health department to kind of overwhelm them. Uh, but these are some of the things we put in it. Like I said before, go from the start to the front, you know, front to the back of the fairgrounds and how you're doing it. We put a catalog in there of the operational enhancements and contingency plans for these areas. You know, we looked at the parking and shuttles. We looked at admission and gates, first aid, public hygiene, entertainment, attractions and things that were there, competition, livestock areas. You know, that one paragraph in the health order pertains exactly to that livestock barns, outdoor, indoor food, carnival, natural resource area, and camping. Those are the areas that we set out that we thought covered us the most. So by all means, each fair is different. Look at it, exactly what's gonna affect you and break those areas down. So go ahead. Oh, so this is the plan we put together last year. That's what it looked like. Um, you know, like I said, there's a little history there at the beginning, a little background history in that about the fair. You know, put stuff in there like that. You know, our health department didn't know we were a 151 acre facility. They didn't understand how the board operated, you know, so we put that stuff in there. The one area that we were able to add to it too is we had several shows last year canceled, but it wasn't in our doing. You know, our natural resource area backed out on us. Um, they didn't want to come and participate. Our schools couldn't come and participate in the Bandorama. Our Jogga Learn program couldn't participate. We put these in the plan as a presentation that this is what we've eliminated or taken out, our attempt to limit congregating and things like that. That's how we put it in there. So go ahead, Meg. And we'll get this plan posted so you guys can take a look at it. I'm not proposing that you make a plan that's just in depth. I'm just simply using this as a guide. You wanna go through and pick some areas out of this that pertain to what you do in that. You know, we went all the way last year. We spelled out how we were going to sanitize the restrooms and do everything. Um, signage, there's a, the kind of signage that we posted in the restrooms, posted around the fairgrounds. We included a map of the fairgrounds, a map of what the facilities are, the in and out. Um, you'll see here one thing we did last year with our shows. You know, our arenas, and I think many of you are the same way, 
we shared shows, you know, our beef show, dairy show were at the same time, sheep and goat shows at the same time, stuff like that. We, uh, we made a, a chart and we broke those shows up so we didn't run them at the same time. The other thing we did last year, and I guess it'll just, whether it'll come into play with our June fairs, hopefully we'll be out of it later on, was a drop-off schedule. You know, normally on the first day of the fair, the evening before, our fairgrounds are extremely cluttered with everybody bringing animals in. We set up a time where they had to bring them in and they had to abide by those times to get their animals in. And then again, on the exit, we were gonna do the same thing. Of course, it didn't come into play finally at the end, but that's what we do. Um, same thing with our exhibit halls up on top with our uh, uh, domestic arts, fine arts, things like that. Normally, you know, there's about three days where they're all scheduled, they come in together. Uh, we broke those down by day and we would only let one department in per day. And that way it cut down on the crowds of the people that were coming in and dropping those in, the things off for display. Campgrounds, you know, we included a campground map of how our campgrounds is set up. We included the uh, uh, spacing and how we weren't letting them congregate together and things like that in the rules, uh, in the plan. Uh, food, beverages, how you're gonna handle, like Howard was just saying, you know, that part about having that posted and that having those areas, designated areas and things like that. And the posting on that, you would add that in there and how they would handle that. Keep going. So that's where it's at. Um, you know, like I said, we need to keep it simple but at the same time, you need to make it in depth. So these health departments, and I guess it's based on your local health department. You know, if you've got a health department out there that just says, yeah, whatever, we don't care, let's go, and they're good to go, you don't need to put as much effort into it. But if you've got a health department out there that's gonna be a little bit tougher, you need to put that plan together. Um, you know, I've got a health department here in Joshua County that we get along with now. We didn't necessarily get along with last year. But that plan we made, we had that in place and we actually took that plan to the health board and met with the health board. And when we left that night, um, we had a ton of friends. Uh, we won members of that health board over to our side to see things in a different perspective. These guys don't understand that what you're going through as a fair, you know what to do, you know how to do it. Um, but if you can point it out to them and you can break it down, they're gonna get on your team and on your side. So do we have any other ones, Meg? I think we were towards the end, weren't we? Oh yeah, there's my favorite symbol for this year because uh, as you know, the frog is our mascot up there. So that's gonna grace our fair book cover this year. The frog's gonna be eating the coronavirus to get rid of it. So that's what we tossed out there. So, um, Howard, did you say Amanda's on now? She is on. Okay. We're gonna jump back over and see um, Amanda's here with us now. There she is, Amanda. If you can, uh, we've been through the order and we've been through a plan, a possible plan. Um, we're trying not to overthink it, but we're just trying to get everybody on the same page and assuming these orders could change well as we move forward too. So maybe you could bring us up to date on anything new that we've got since spring meetings So. Sure. So there's not a whole lot new since the spring meeting. Um, I think Paul did a great job with his presentation, giving you some ideas. Um, you know, definitely it's going to remain critically important to work with your local health department. Um, but we feel very confident in all of your ability to put on a fun, safe, full fair. Um, I was a little bit late um, getting on to this because I was watching a house committee and the Ohio State Fair was giving a presentation. I know there's a lot of questions about what the state fair is doing and a lot of their decisions right now are being made for, for strictly financial purposes. Um, they do not have the funding nor the staff to pull off a full fair. So they are limiting it to um, the Jupiter Fair and the livestock exhibitions um, and not opening up to the public. Um, but Virgil did specify that by public, that means um, parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, and guests. So if there's, you know, anybody you know they're showing, um, you're probably going to be allowed through the gates. Um, I know they're also pushing for additional funding from the Ohio legislature. That was pretty much the point of the presentation to, 
day um, to request that additional support from the state. Um, we've been very fortunate and had a lot of support from the legislature and the administration to make sure that you all got supports financially um, to help weather this storm and put you in a good position to have good fares this year. Um, it remains to be seen, you know, at, even as more people get vaccinated, we are still seeing cases um, either plateau or even inch up a little bit. So we are not anywhere near that 50 cases per 100,000 benchmark that the governor has set for, you know, removing all of the restrictions and orders. Um, so I don't think that we will hit that milestone um, by the start of fair season. Um, but there also is still in the mix that Senate Bill 22 that puts additional legislative oversight over the orders and that officially goes into effect on June 22nd. So there could be some legislative action to change some of these orders. Um, but right now, you know, the order as Paul has laid out is pretty general and has given you tips on how to comply and fit with it with, with still making a good event for your community. So that's really all that I had to add. I thought it was a good presentation. Uh, Paul, I have some points to add. Uh, the state health department has made available to us uh, free PDF signage. Uh, it's in PDF format that you can print off and either send to a signed printer or do yourself and laminate. I will be getting those out in the next newsletter, which will come out right after we select the queen here in uh, uh, mid-May. Uh, let us know if you're having an issue with your um, health department, let your district director know, and we will try to help mitigate that, uh, uh, you know, whatever the issue is. Know your county infection rate. Um, I follow it at our county, uh, his, you know, uh, every week to know what, what, what the infection rate's doing. It's good information to have, especially if you're a county like uh, Ashtabula, um, and I don't know, whatever counties are sliding the right direction. Have that in your pocket that you know so you can speak to it to your health department. Uh, campground rules. There are no campground rules. Um, that was rescinded uh, by, the, by, the, by the rescinding order. And some of these items that we went over today do come into play there. But I know we were all concerned about camp, you know, uh, campground compounding. And I believe uh, we can probably go ahead and compound again as long as we follow these rules here on the 10 group uh, six foot clearance. No carnival guidance. We do have Nick McGinnis on today. I've known this family for probably 35 years. Uh, he's on the call today. Nick, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, there's no carnival guidance uh, in, in the ruling. And really last summer for the eight or nine fairs that did run, there was no carnival guidance other than sanitation, signage, and the six foot rule. Uh, I know that at our fair, they got real picky about people standing in line, but then they got on a deck ride 28 on a deck ride, sitting shoulder to shoulder. So, um, you know, again, it's going to be up to your county, but I would include carnivals uh, in there and state what your carnival company is going to do. Uh, you know, most of them that did run last year uh, had no issues other than the six foot rule standing in line. So that's all I have to add, Paul. I think Meg pulled up your signage too from the health department there. Um, some of the signage and stuff. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and again, and I had a pretty big call with the, with the health department uh, last Friday. Uh, one of the suggestions they made, uh, because they're trying to figure out how to get people convinced to vaccinate, uh, was maybe if you have a really a slow day on the grounds and you don't know what to do and try to, a promotion. And the, one of the people on the call suggested, what if you had like from opening time until three o'clock, uh, show your vaccination card for free admission. Well, that sparked my interest because I've got days at Talmage when it is absolutely deadsville. And uh, so we're going to be talking about this at the next board meeting. Really gonna, gonna, not going to cost me anything. We won't stamp them coming in or out, uh, but it may help bring some activity on a, on a slow weekday. I think we didn't hit on it before we talked about it. You know, it's one of my biggest concerns is what, what limiting factor are we going to have in attendance for just in general? You know, I think that's probably 
I'm not going to put words in Virgil's mouth, obviously, with State Fair, but I know that's something that he's watched very closely last year, especially um, the, the surveys that were out there that said the, the drop in attendance and what it'll what it'll be. I mean, that drop may just be enough to keep your crowds from forming and getting too big on you. We just won't know until we start getting into it. I know there's been a prediction out there that everybody's just ready to get out of the house and get back and going. And as soon as we open the gates, we're going to be flooded, but I just don't see that happening. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I think that that's happened in some small situations. Um, I'm not sure that that's going to happen when you start talking about larger groups and larger events and stuff across the board. So um, I hope we've helped today. I hope we've given you some tools. I hope we've given you some ideas to think about um, and putting this plan together and putting it in place. But by all means, make sure you make the effort to get a plan in writing and get it on paper, get it out and have it available. So if you run into trouble, you don't want to be three weeks out before the fair and then all of a sudden get questioned by the health department and come to question us and we say, where's your plan and you don't have it down or you're starting to make it. Make sure you work on this thing now. You can always delete stuff out of it. If things get released, you know, like Amanda says, if these orders come out in a week or two and something gets dropped off, you know, you can always delete it out of your plan, but it's hard to add things back into the plan. So are there any questions we can help anybody with today or anything direct that somebody wants to talk about? Um, whether it be with the health plans or any other activity that we're, we're dealing with, anything at all? The quiet crowd, I think we've worn them out on virtual programming, Howard, so I think we're, we're, we're winding <laughs> down to the end. So everybody's... Uh, I see Rod Arter's on. Uh, might give an opportunity to, uh, to uh, let us know what's on his mind. Yep, we're getting there. I had him on my notes. So, Mr. Arter. Hey, I just want to thank Paul for, you know, doing what he's uh, accomplished with the program. It hasn't been easy. Uh, the numbers went down a little bit, but I, I'm very excited to see as many people took time today to be on this last one. At least for now, it's the last one. Time will tell. But uh, I just promise you the OFMA board is working diligently with the state and Amanda and everybody trying to uh, make these fairs go. And uh, I'm pretty confident that we're we're going to have full fairs. And uh, unlike Paul, I hope we do get a whole bunch of people showing up and just have to deal with it. But uh, thank you for hanging with us and uh, move forward and get your plan together and we can have a great season. Hope to see a lot of you. Thank you. Don't get me wrong, Rod. I'm not against having a bunch of people. I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to count them as they're coming through the gate. So I, it'll be great. So, um, Paul, real quick, we had some people show up at our fair board meeting last night about a problem anyway. And these people are were just so passionate about what they wanted and talked about, you know, people just want to do something. You know, they want to get out. They want to come this. And she says, I'm afraid you're going to have more people and you know what to do with. And it's that and it's it's true. I think for some people, there's people that are still scared. And that's just the nature of the beast. I think that's the problem. We just don't know what that number is going to be. And I mean, we've seen that, you know, I mean, I, I can attest to it firsthand. You know, we didn't, obviously we had to cancel fair last year. We we're Labor Day weekend. We were still hanging in there until August 10th. We didn't pull the plug on it until August 10th. And that was two weeks after the governor told us we had to pull the plug, but we pulled the plug on August 10th. Two weeks after the fair, we had truck and tractor pull and we had demolition derby one weekend too outside the fair because you can only get COVID during the fair. You can't get it after the fair. So we did those events and the same thing where, Rod, we thought we'd deal with the same thing with, you know, we're going to do this and we're going to be overwhelmed and how are we going to handle it? And we weren't. So that's what, you know, that's what I'm saying. It just, we just don't know what that number is of those people that are going to step back from it a little bit. And uh, so that's where we do have one question in that says, what about the last three fairs of the year? Who will not fall under the liability protection of contacting, contracting COVID or other potential issues? Amanda, that's your question, so. Yeah, so this came up at the district meeting. Um, there is, the legislature passed last year, just a general COVID liability bill that applied to everybody. So it applies the same to um, your healthcare providers as it does your, you know, Home Depot, as it does, you know, any of your events that basically says a person, business, what have you, cannot 
be held liable for um, any contraction exposure to COVID. So that protection is in effect through Jul or September 30th. So we didn't really contemplate, again, this was passed, you know, almost a year ago. So um, we didn't really think that far ahead, I guess, that that date um, would leave a few fares out for 2021. Um, I don't know if there's any discussion at the legislature to extend that. I know the effort was really led by the Ohio Chamber of Commerce, the NFIB, um, so I can reach out to them and see if they're, you know, looking at extending those protections. Thanks, Amanda. Another question in, is there any information available about the issues that Union County had during their federal audit? Um, I'll be perfectly honest with you, that was our plan uh, with um, next week, we were going to have one more round of programming and have Union County do that. Uh, we reached out to them. We couldn't get it set up in time before we needed to get this notice out to you. So at this point, we've just put that one on hold. Um, we can maybe bring it into play a little bit later, although everybody's going to get busy, but by all means, we'll have it in at the convention next year um, and, and get that in and talked about. So we'll look forward to what they went through and what they dealt with on that. So Oh, let's see. Another question. I'm sorry if this address was on call with our credit card company, reading about how you wear a mask, but if you're outside saying six feet from others, are masks required? This is a pretty hot topic around here. But I don't think that's changed at all. I mean, we did cover it a little bit on masks. I mean, that's what it is. If you're outside, you can stay six feet from somebody. You don't necessarily need to have a mask on. If you can't stay within six feet from somebody, then you need to have the mask on. If you're indoors at any time, you currently need to have the mask on. So that hasn't changed. It's been in effect for over a year. I mean, it's the same thing we've been dealing with. I think it's safe to say that on our midways and our gatherings and our fairgrounds that that's going to apply. There might be outside, but there's no way they're going to be six feet away from somebody if they're moving around with people. So they're going to need to put the masks on. However, you know, the governor made it clear to us that one day on a Zoom call, do the best you can. He's not asking you to throw somebody off the grounds that doesn't wear a mask. He's not asking you to be the mask Gestapos or anything else on the facility. He's asking you to do the best you possibly can. Make a signage available, make masks available, make sure your employees are wearing them and stuff like that. He's asking you to do your part. That's what he's asking. So anything else, guys? Well, I think it was great to see everybody um, at the spring meetings this year. You know, the Fair Managers Board was was struggling with the spring meetings. We wanted to get back. We wanted to get back out. Um, you know, in February, we were still looking at counties that were shut down and they weren't available. But we went ahead and forced it, went through with them, and we had a fantastic turnout. I think Amanda would agree that she'd like to thank everybody for all the PAC contributions and the 50-50 and the raffles. That was huge. Our PAC fund had been deleted uh, dramatically obviously by not being able to get together last year and so you guys were fantastic in supporting that we really appreciate it it was good to see everybody from a queen standpoint i think the queens uh we want to thank that queen committee you know they were just like we were with the program committee you make six or seven plans and every week while we get new uh results in and we'd have to change the plans we tried to get those interviews in you know, we had a fantastic group of queens show up at all the spring meetings. And I believe, Howard, we had, what, four rounds? Didn't we have four? Uh, Tim's on here today. I think I saw Tim here. We had four, uh, four sets of interviews with districts last weekend. We got four more or five more coming this coming weekend. They've been flawless to this point. Uh, I think the queens have really appreciated having the opportunity. And, you know, it's been different, but, it, you know, it's not all terrible. So, so. Is there anything else today? All right, well, guys, well. Oh, ahead, just wonder everyone that the newsletter is out there uh, coming out of the district meetings along with the award winners and the Hall of Fame inductees. It is on the website. You should have also gotten it from your district director. Uh, we, we were putting a lot of pressure on them to communicate more effectively versus me putting out a mass email just to our 95 points of contact. So uh, again, newsletters are online uh, on the OhioAffairs.org webpage, as well as all the all these recordings from all these meetings are online as well under the YouTube. And we encourage you to 
uh, sign on, um, you know, in order to register, the more people we have, last I looked, we had 212, the more we have, the more power we have in using YouTube. And we see this platform going forward for a lot of things. The next posting after this will be the Queen program at Hartford, May 24th, I believe the date is. We're gonna record that and, and put it up on the YouTube for everyone to see. Uh, trying to simulate what we did in Columbus uh, just by you know getting the information out to you. Thank you, Paul. Yeah, and I think that's May 22nd, actually, down at Hartford. May 22nd will be the Queen Contest down at Hartford. So we'll wrap things up down there. And by all means, I mean, this is the end of our virtual programming. It's not to say we won't throw something together again. If things change, we can always do that. If you guys are seeing a change and, you, and we haven't seen it, get a hold of us, get a hold of your district directors. Also, get a hold of your district directors if you guys think you want to have a Zoom meeting. You know, OFMA is paying for this platform. They have it, I believe, what powered through the end of the year. So if your district directors have the ability to use this as well, yes. if you guys need to get together and use it so they can. So, well, if there's nothing else today. I want to thank everybody for spending the winter with me on Tuesday mornings at 10 o'clock. <laughs> so we've uh, we made it through this thing and we'll start on, we'll add to it and go from there. So thanks everybody.